And here she is riding an ostrich. Yurika Strato has always lived an active life. Growing up in South Africa, Yurika played field hockey for her high school and college teams. She also became a judo champion. I just wanted to show that one because she's had the moves. So her wife Nita wasn't surprised, and when it came time to remodel their University Heights home, Yurika did most of the work herself, starting with the kitchen. She decided she wanted to knock out the load-bearing wall, but we had to leave the post. So she figured out, well, why don't we just put the post in the middle of the bar counter, and it ended up looking really good. Then Yurika tackled a bathroom. And she actually herself tore out all the old bathroom and then rebuilt the walls from the up to the sheetrock. Nita says it was during this project in 2013 that Eureka suddenly had problems with one of her feet. We really thought that, you know, it was just a sprain or some sort of weakness thing. And we finished the bathroom and got married. And then a week later, she was diagnosed with ALS. Up the hill. Here we go. When we first met Eureka last October, she was living in a wheelchair, but she had no trouble breathing. Hey, hi. These days, because her diaphragm muscles are so weak, Eureka needs a machine to help her breathe most of the time. The way she figures, it won't be long before she'll lose the ability to swallow. You know, this advanced directive states um, choosing to self-administer me medication to bring about my peaceful and humane death on the California um, Aid and Dying Act, end of life, life option. Eureka's physician, Dr. Sunita Shilam, goes through the protocol required to write a prescription for a lethal dose of drugs. You want good absorption of the aid and dying prescription. Eureka was planning to take advantage of California's aid and dying law as soon as it went into effect. But some close friends are getting married on June 11th. The law takes effect the 9th, and then, uh, well, if it wasn't, If it wasn't for their wedding, um, I probably would have uh, exercised my right sooner, but I don't want to, because they've waited so long, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to spoil their wedding, you know. Right after that, Eureka says she'll fill the prescription and take her own life. However, it won't be all doom and gloom until the final moment. After all, she and Nita still have a lot of living to do. There's a trip to Morro Bay, some dinners with friends and family. Sure, they won't be able to do everything they've wanted to do, but who does? Nita says they never really talked about death before Eureka was diagnosed with ALS. Since then, the topic has been unavoidable. It's weird how it hasn't diminished the beauty of life at all. In fact, if anything, it's highlighted how awesome our lives have been independently and together. Nita explains she just doesn't have the emotional bandwidth to deal with anything else right now. <laughs> I'm full time taking on the passing of my life partner, my wife, the love of my life, my best friend. Um, and it's, it's really becoming close to the end now. And I'm still not really thinking about her dying. I'm thinking about her being alive right now and in the living room and that that's where I want to be. It can hold, is it amphibious? So that's where they're spending a lot of their remaining time together, in the living room, in the house that Eureka remodeled herself. You didn't have them that big in South Africa. You know, yeah, I've, I've done a lot in my life and we've done a lot since we've been together. And I don't, uh, I don't regret any of it. It's just been cut a little short. But otherwise, it's been fantastic. The excess salt is sneezed out. <laughs> Kenny Goldberg, KPBS News.